couple years ago, Rocksteady announced that they were releasing a new game set in the Arkhamverse, and I couldn't have been happier until it was announced that you would kill the Justice League. Just was wondering, is this uh, an out of season April Fool's joke? And ever since then, I've been dreading for this game to come out. And now that the game is here, it has done nothing but break my heart. Let's start off with the elephant in the room. Yes, in this game you kill the Justice League. Is it incredibly stupid? Absolutely. Bitch, I'll never forgive you for this. I have no idea why, after nine years since Arkham Knight, did Rocksteady think it was the right choice to not only make a looter shooter type game, but also make it so that the entire story is about killing everyone's favorite DC superheroes. And I think the biggest problem people have with the story is how unceremonious the Justice League is killed off. Like when you kill the Flash, there's no big send off, and it ends with Captain Boomerang peeing on Flash. Flash. And I've decided that I want to die. And it's literally the same exact type of send-off for every other League member. The only one who gets anything remotely close to a send-off is Wonder Woman and Batman. Now I know a lot of people are talking about how upsetting it was to kill Batman off this way, and I get it. It's extremely weird to have a studio make one of the best video game trilogies of all time and then follow up with this. I'm honestly just more confused because I'm trying to figure out who thought this story was a good idea. I do not want to comment. Why? <laughs> Why? Now there are some rumors and leaks that the Justice League we kill in the game may be clones, but I don't know. To tell the story through a very mediocre way and then follow up the story in different seasons of the game just makes no sense. And I feel like this way of storytelling is just going to alienate the game's player base. Brainiac as the main villain was okay, I guess. You barely even interact with him. And towards the end of the game, you find out that you have to fight 12 other Brainiacs from other dimensions, so that's not annoying at all. But let's talk about the squad for a second. These guys don't really do that much. I feel like the only thing they do is learn how to be a team by the end of the game. But that is so boring because we've already seen that in so many other adaptations of the Suicide Squad. But more importantly, the Arkham First lore makes no sense. How come there are two different Deadshots? The game says that the Arkham Origins and City Deadshot was a copycat. Well then why is the copycat better than the original? Does that mean that Batman was fighting a copycat for over 10 years? Why does everyone think that Batman's going to kill them, even though three of them have already been beaten by Batman and Batman didn't kill him? How does Harley not know who King Shark is, even though in the Batman Assault and Arkham movie, which is canon to the timeline, they were on the same team? Wait, King Shark died in that movie too. How is he alive in this game? Is this also a copycat of King Shark? Why does this make no sense? Is this movie even canon to the timeline anymore? My life it's a lie! Somebody's got to stab! The gameplay, however, can be extremely hit or miss. The most fun part about the game is the traversal. This is the only time that all the squad members actually feel different from each other, and Rockstar did a really good job in making the traversal really engaging, and I never got bored of it. The main gunplay is actually really fun for all different members of the squad, too, and it made some of the missions actually really fun to play. But what makes the gameplay so boring is that there's absolutely no mission variety. It's the same missions over and over again, but the only difference in missions are the boss fights. But get this, the boss fights are all exactly the same, too. You just shoot the Justice League over and over again until they die. The only boss fight which is kinda different is the Batman one, where you get hunted by him for a little bit until you just shoot a giant glowing Batman until he dies. The Brainiac boss fight is even worse, it's literally just a copy of the Flash fight. Why is no one having a good time? I specifically requested it. The game tries to make it seem like there's a ton of mission variety with different challenges in each mission, or with the enemy types, but it's literally the same thing over and over again. And it gets even worse after you finish the main story, since it's once again the same missions over and over again, except each time it's just a a little bit harder. Another thing that really drove me nuts is the loot system. There are so many resources and loot to collect and I swear almost none of it is worth anything. I think I've maybe had to change what guns I'm using on my squad members about two or three times. Once you get some semi-decent loot, the rest of the guns are just pointless to even collect. It's just really weird to play a game with an emphasis on loot and gear when half the stuff in the game is not even worth anything. Everything here is garbage! Another thing that really ticked me off was how overbearing the UI is. I swear there were some times in the game where I couldn't see what I was doing because my screen was so overloaded. Now I know that you can turn certain things off, which is a nice option to have, but to me it doesn't matter, since this was the way that the game was intended to play. The customization was also extremely underwhelming. You get a few choices on how you want your character to look, which is a nice surprise, because I didn't think that would be in this game, but it's all just so bland. And this might be a nitpick, but Harley Quinn has some of the worst hair choices I have ever seen. Are the scissors broken in your house, son? One of the better parts of the game are the graphics. Rocksteady actually did a really good job making this game look good. It's still crazy to think that Arkham Knight looks better than this game, but I still think the overall quality of the graphics for this game looks pretty good. The character designs are also really top notch. I don't think there was a character design I didn't like, which is actually a really nice change of pace. Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League is one of the weirdest games I have ever played. Although I basically hate everything about this game and what it's trying to do, I surprisingly had a little bit of fun. I feel like the first few hours of the game are actually really fun and engaging, but the game just falls off completely 
completely once you realize that the game just copies and pastes every mission, and the gear you get half the time is just completely useless. I think it's also incredibly frustrating that we get to have the Justice League in a video game, but once again, it's another storyline where the main characters are evil. Literally, the only video games that use the Justice League properly are the Lego games. <laughs> After playing this game for quite some time, the only way I can recommend it is if it's on sale. In its current state, I don't think this game is worth anything close to $70. For some odd reason, I still think this game could be salvageable. If the rumors and leaks are true and the leak does come back, and Rocksteady is able to ride that wave and fix some of the current issues and add in some really fun squad members, then I can maybe see this game really turning itself around. But as the game is right now, Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League it gets a 4 out of 10. Okay, well that final score was given before the Joker DLC came out. Now that the DLC is out, the game goes down one more point. I cannot believe how horrible this DLC is. There are barely any new missions, you don't even unlock Joker until you get to level 35 of this battle pass thing. This DLC bummed me out so much that I didn't even unlock Joker. I just gave up after playing two hours. This showed me that Rocksteady has no intentions of fixing any of the complaints players had and this game has gotten rid of all of its potential. So Suicide Squad Killed the Justice League now sits at a 3 out of 10. <laughs> 